cannot deny that you trespass on my tower almost every day! You cannot deny these nuts! I... This isn't my usual content, but I like have to talk to someone about this. Someone asked me if I knew what the most common squirrel in our area was. And of course I said, this guy, this one, the Eastern gray squirrel, you know him, he's a classic. He's the, he's the blue jeans of the wildlife world. He, but you guys, the most common squirrel in my area isn't him. It's flying squirrels? Here in Ohio, the southern flying squirrel is our most common squirrel, and my life is a lie, and I don't know how to feel anymore, and the reason why you never see them is because they're nocturnal, and my life is a lie. Good morning to everyone following updates about Norfolk Southern. That would be the company behind the Ohio train derailment, for those who still haven't heard somehow. I want to show you something that I know you guys will find interesting, but before I do, train laborers were trying to stop this. A few months ago, they were trying to strike for better working conditions. All they wanted was a few days off. And Biden and Congress stopped it. Here is your reminder to support train unions and laborers. Okay, let me show you this thing. Let me introduce you to my best friend, Open Secrets. They have a profile on Norfolk Southern. This is the contributions and lobbying they did for the last election cycle. You can see the top recipients, but if you go down, all recipients, Scroll down. You can filter this by candidate, and you can see every single candidate that they have put money behind. Every single one. If a rep sees this, um, overturn Citizens United, now. The internet has had a lot to say over the past few years about mom shaming, the concept being that for reasons of sexism, mothers are more criticized in their parenting styles than fathers are. And this is a valid problem, but conversations around it almost always involve celebrities like Chrissy Teigen and things like how they buckle their kids' car seats. Like, yeah, this is irritating, but it shouldn't be the whole conversation. Because the more material victims of mom shaming, for example, are the black single mothers who have been assigned stereotypes like welfare queens simply for trying to feed their kids off the government benefits that they need and deserve. And in response to this stigma, the government has literally been cutting benefits to single moms, making it harder to feed your kids, right? The real victims of mom shaming are the teenage girls who are now being forced to carry pregnancies to term around the country, even in cases of rape or incest. And we all know that instead of being provided the support and resources that new moms need and deserve, they are going to be shamed for having sex too young. So I'm not saying that you should go around insulting Chrissy Teigen in her car seats, but I am saying that like so much of mainstream feminism, if this is all you're talking about, you are missing the point. Native facts you might not know, how the term redskins came to be. It originates from a time when native people were actively hunted and killed for bounties and their skins were used as proof of Indian kill. Bounties were issued by European companies, colonies, and some states, most notably California. By the turn of the 20th century, it had evolved to become a term meant to disparage and denote inferiority and savagery in American culture. By 1932, the word had been a term of commodification in the commentary on the color of a body part. It was not then, and is not now, an honorific. The term has since evolved to take on further derogatory meanings. Specifically in the 20th century, it became a widely used derogatory term to negatively characterize native characters in the media of pop culture, such as films and on television. Uh, why is there a general movement to the right? When, when you have high concentration of wealth and stagnation for the majority, uh, that influences the political system in very obvious ways. Those who have wealth and uh, capital and the corporate sector, they can influence uh, political choices. They always do, but they can do it much more if wealth is concentrated. So you have a kind of decline in, in functioning democracy. Well, when you have phenomena like this going on around the world, people get angry, they get resentful, they get bitter. Uh, they begin to oppose the governing institutions. Uh, they begin to be susceptible to claims that everything's fake news and many other things like that. They just lose trust in everything. That's fertile soil for demagogues who can easily pick that up and say uh, the fault is not the governing institutions. The fault is uh, Afro-Americans who are taking away your welfare. Uh, uh, immigrants, they're stealing your jobs. Uh, China is stealing your jobs. Uh, some, some bad people around are doing all this to you. And then you get the rightward drift that you're talking about. But I think the 
core answer to your question is the anger and resentment and uh, uh, distrust of institutions that resulted from things like uh, living under stagnation for 40 years when enormous wealth is being accumulated right next door. Uh, that doesn't make people happy. Uh, even if they don't understand the uh, mechanisms behind it, they can see it in their lives. And you kind of lash out. And it's easy, again, it's very easy for demagogues to organize a xenophobic, racist, other attitudes and say, okay, that's the problem. Today, we picked up 15 leftover catering trays of amazingly delicious food from a production studio here in Brooklyn. If you have a bike or car, we are always looking for help picking up good food that would otherwise go to waste. The trays are too big to go directly into community fridges, so first we eat and then repackage these meals into smaller portions. Clean, once-used containers are always appreciated, and new volunteers are always welcome. I do not mean to be a bummer, but to the people who have been talking about trying to do a nationwide general strike in the U.S., it doesn't start with a social media post. It doesn't start with an online sign-up sheet, and it doesn't start with a shareable meme. It starts with unions getting involved. It starts with local mutual aid networks. It starts with making plans for the people who would literally die as the result of a general strike. I, I'm here for the energy. I, I'm so here for it. And people are frustrated and tired, and we need to do something, yes. But it, it doesn't work by just posting online about it. What are you going to do for food? And if you have a plan for food, what are all your neighbors going to do for food? Yeah, we only need to last a few days before the entire system will come crumbling down, but what are we doing in that meantime? What's the plan for not getting killed by the cops when they are sent in to force you to work? If you look at all at the history of labor movements and strikes, they get violent. Cops get sent in. They kill people over this. Battles have been fought on U.S. soil between striking laborers and class traders fighting on behalf of the capitalists, and it gets bloody. I'm only saying this because I want to see change happen, and I want people to understand the gravity of what they're asking for. Not to scare people away from doing it, but to better understand the scope of what actually needs to happen to make this work. So look up and contact mutual aid networks in your area, and... Form a union at your workplace if you're not already unionized, and if you don't know how to do that, find someone in your local area who does know how to do that. Learn the names of your neighbors and have their contact information. Make sure that you can help each other in the event of something catastrophic. Anyway, we're all in this together and you deserve more. So, be well. Socialism sounds good in theory, but it could never work in real life. People are too competitive, too greedy, too selfish, too cruel, too violent. Public debate about socialism doesn't really focus on the merits of socialism. Instead of debating whether it would be better if everyone was housed, fed, free from exploitation, and working shorter days, because it's immediately obvious that it would be, or how we might get there and the institutions that would coordinate these needs, the conversation gets cut short on the grounds that it's unrealistic. Sure, capitalism sucks, but that's because humans suck, so why should we believe socialism could be any better? Socialism is pie in the sky. It's hubris from young people who don't know how the world works yet. Just wait till you hit your 30s and you'll grow out of it. Everyone has people in their life who are greedy, selfish jerks, and everyone can recognize the part of themselves that is a greedy, selfish jerk. It stands to reason that human nature has, at the very least, an element of selfishness and cruelty to it. But this has very little to do with socialism, and as a justification for capitalism, it's a very strange one. We're going to be looking at how this idea of a singular, corrupt, logical, and self-interested human nature gains traction as a defense of capitalism, the inherent contradictions of this idea, and why it doesn't actually undermine socialist politics. People regularly make massive personal sacrifices before their brain even has the time to compute what kind of selfish benefit they might gain from it. There are plenty of documented cases of people jumping into a river to save a drowning stranger at the drop of a hat. And probably even more undocumented cases of the same thing. Hundreds of millions of hours are volunteered every year. Mutual aid networks exist throughout the world. And on a daily basis, you almost certainly do something kind for someone else. Tiny little selfless acts like opening a door for someone are almost invisible in our everyday life because they're so immediate and common. The simple fact that selfishness and greed exist is not a justification for building an economic system that rewards that behavior. 
If you believe that humans are naturally selfish, rather than believing that it's something we're capable of and that we're equally capable of kindness, and most of the time we just flip-flop between the two, that's fine. I probably won't be able to convince you otherwise. But I won't spend too much time on that because no matter what you believe human nature is, it doesn't logically follow that selfishness and greed should be the ticket to wealth and power in our society. If you think we're all rotten to our core, you're going to need another piece of evidence or some other argument to prove to me that that means our society should reward those who take this to the extreme. That the most openly selfish and greedy of us deserve to be on top. My guess is those arguments aren't going to be very convincing. I don't know many people that believe society would be best served when selfish people are in charge and have more power to be selfish. argument is made that trans women are women, for example. And what that seems to mean is that trans women are identical to women. Now, if people want to say trans women are not biological women. Obviously, that is the case. But people don't seem to want to say that, although that is obviously scientifically true. Trans women are not biological women. Biological women are biological women. But where are you going with this? What, 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 is your, what, is your, what are you trying to accomplish by asking yourself, is it science or is it not science? It's how, it's but, people in society. But, but this, is, this is a perfect example of an area where suddenly it doesn't matter to say things that are just true. Like why is it, why is it bad or wrong to uh, point let, out? Let me, I have another way to, to approach this. Um, I care what is objectively true in the world as a scientist. Um, but let me not say even as a scientist, I just simply care what is objectively true. And science happens to be a pretty potent path to invoke, to find out what is true. And so if people express themselves on a gender spectrum, and that is an actual thing in an actual society, if we have not fully explained that scientifically, that's an interesting frontier to study. If you want to say it's only sociological, then it's the purview of the social sciences. I don't care who studies it. It's an interesting fact about society that's worth learning about. If to, to make it, to fight someone and say, it's not biological, it's just your this, it's, it's real and it's there. Well, because it's real because it manifests. But it Respect my pronouns or I will stab you. Hey, let me know in the comments below which queer hardcore band you think is gonna sample that first. That commenter on the other video would have said the same thing to someone literally half my size. To them, obesity isn't a marker of a particular size on a spectrum. It's literally just a generic insult. And that's fat phobia, when the concept of fatness has literally become a cultural stand-in for worthlessness. I guess you could call me mid-size, but I don't even claim that. Um, personally, I don't think it's particularly helpful uh, for fat liberation. I don't experience size-based systemic oppression. Doctors don't dismiss my health concerns and cite my weight. Uh, generic seating is designed to fit my bodies. Most stores carry clothes that fit me. Have I been made to feel less than because my body is squishy and I'm not athletic? Obviously, but so has a size four. <laughs> And that's why you see a lot of people who literally wear a size medium being like, I'm a mid-size queen. Uh, it's because that word doesn't really do anything except name the sensation of worthlessness that people associate with their bodies. Every single person alive has insecurities about their body that make them feel like they're undeserving. Nobody deserves to hate themselves. Feeling unworthy? That sucks. But it doesn't make you fat. And if you are fat, it doesn't mean that being less fat would make you more worthy. When we feel unworthy because somebody made us feel obese, we are reinforcing the validity of a system that restricts fat people's access to resources. 
Anyway, just a little tip for anyone who would like to be mean to me. <laughs> It'll hurt my feelings a lot more if you insult my personality. It's not easy to make me feel worthless and being associated with fatness isn't gonna cut it. So that video appeared on my For You page because apparently TikTok doesn't realize that I'm a raging leftist who hates cops. But I think this is an interesting learning opportunity for everyone. See, the original question that I had after watching that video was, why don't cops use tasers instead of guns in things like traffic stops where unarmed black men die? Um, and then I did research. I know, I know, it's crazy. Women do research? Oh my, leftists do re- oh god. And believe it or not, cops actually do use tasers a lot more than you think. They just kill people with them. In 2008, Amnesty International did a report on hundreds of taser-related deaths, and they found that 90% of the people involved in those deaths were unarmed. And the problem isn't the tasers. It's the police officers. Oh my god, who would have seen it coming? Any weapon in the hands of a police officer can be lethal, and oftentimes it will be, and there will be no repercussions. That's all. Go enjoy your life. Yay! Hey! Oh, how spontaneous of you all! Oh, my goodness! Now, don't worry, we've got about half an hour of it, darling. Transgenderism is where the person feels that they will find happiness through mutilating their body. A girl in my yoga class got a boob job. No, no, that would be completely different from transgender, which is pretending to be the opposite sex in order to find happiness. So the problem is people doing things to find happiness. Um, I, it comes from a breakdown, actually it's a breakdown of the family unit. Do you have a wife? No. Kids? No. But I'm worried about the consequences for children throughout our state and nation. So you're doing everything in your power to protect children from other grown men besides yourself. Well, they'll, they'll, they'll put it as, um, well, you have no children, so why are you interested in children? You can be interested in children for other reasons than because you have them. Right, right. Some of those reasons are illegal. Meet the rest of our group. Hi, Megan. Uh, I'm Jan, and I'm a softball player, and I'm a homosexual. I'm Sinead. I like pain. I'm homosexual. I'm Joel. I'm a Jew. And, uh, oh, oh, homosexual. We met. Graham. I'm Graham, and I like girls a lot. And, um, I'm homosexual. Andre, actor, dancer, Homosexual. Dolph, homosexual varsity wrestler. How you doing? I'm Clayton Dunn. I work in retail. I'm a homosexual. I might get canceled for saying this, but I really don't give a shit. I've never seen an attractive they them before. Like, I've never seen a 10 out of 10 they them. I don't think they exist. I've been on this app for years, bro. Years. I never seen no 10 out of 10. They them person. Taking handcuffs off my kids. Sorry, I, are you a mom? I'm the parents. Okay, so you might find it hard to believe because my friends on Twitter say I give off tall person energy, but I'm only 5'4", okay? So I am not a tall person. I am also a little bit chunky and I'm not necessarily the strongest person. However, uh, with my master's degree in developmental disabilities, I currently teach in a district that serves the top 1% of disabled students in the area, all right? And I don't want to violate FERPA here, but I've been concussed on multiple occasions. I've been bitten bloody. I've been scratched bloody. I have seen coworkers of mine be taken to the hospital via ambulance, okay? The, the, the severity of behaviors that we face, the level of aggression that we see both 
to others and to themselves, okay? It is, it's up here, all right? And at no point have we ever handcuffed our students behind their backs and two person pinned them in a prone position. And so I'm looking, I'm looking at these officers, remember, I'm only 5'4", I'm also just a regular teacher, okay? I have a regular old teaching license. And I'm looking at these two grown adult men who are with a 12 year old, they're with a 12 year old child. I, the school I work at is ninth grade through 21, okay? It's, 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 it's high school in transition, okay? And I can tell you with 1000% uh, certainty that in none of the heightened escalated situations that we face, would a two-person prone restraint and a pair of handcuffs solve anything or make anything better? And so it's the fact that they have him pinned. It's the fact that he's handcuffed. And it's the fact that his guardian is like, please take these off. And they're like, no. We see where you're coming from, but we can't do that. Okay, so we're trained in CPI, crisis prevention and intervention. There are districts that use Ukiru, there are districts that use PCM. Okay, there are de-escalation strategies that are proven to work. Now, are they foolproof? Of course not. I just told you about injuries that just me, myself, uh, that I've gotten. That's not even, that's not even, like, that's, that's this much in a this much, okay? But what I'm saying is, <laughs> there's no reason for that. There's no reason for what I just stitched, okay? And it's, it's truly one of my biggest fears for my students. It is especially for the, you know, she's able to ask him questions, he can answer them. I have so many students that, that like, their splintered abilities, okay, and the gaps in their comprehension, that would quite literally be a nightmare for them because they wouldn't understand what's going on. And this is why we say ACAB, and we, we just need better, they, oh, I'm sweating and I need to go drink some water. And that's the one thing we can't colonize. So what do we do? We turn oppression into social currency. White femininity is very enviably good at this, metabolizing critique and converting it into a moral, political, or financial asset. It's a move that gets repeated all over popular culture. Here's a partial inventory of things white femininity has celebrated or reclaimed. Having friends, having feelings, not having feelings, being ambitious, being sad, being messy, being difficult, caring too much, not caring at all, turning any of this into art. Of course, these are things that everybody does, but it's mostly white women who get to be their canonized ambassadors. The list isn't an exhaustive taxonomy, but it captures a number of the major female-driven cultural shifts of the last several decades. The 90s trauma memoir, the rom-com peak, confessional songwriting, girl boss feminism, the true crime mania, the personal essay explosion, all genres whose whiteness has been well documented. There's power, to be sure, in reclaiming these traits. Before they became artistic principles or cause for celebration, many of them began as gendered insults. To take back these so-called weaknesses is a tiny correction in the ongoing assault on the autonomy and self-expression of anyone who's not a cisgender male. It's good and necessary work, but too often, these same sites of feminine assertion become contested territory. White women are marginalized by virtue of their gender, but insulated by racial privilege. This is an obvious point, but it also presents an awkward tension to navigate. In answer to it, white women have evolved a number of tactics to maintain, to maintain a position as one who both have and have not. Thank God for the cops. Who else is gonna show up and murder my neighbor's dog? Who else is gonna write a report when you get assaulted? Show up at the scene of the crime, take a couple pictures and then accuse you of lying. We love the cops who wouldn't ever lie on the stand. If you can't do the time, you shouldn't have got that tan. We understand they're trained to be afraid of the sun, so they should definitely be allowed to shoot anyone. We love the cops. Stop.
breakfast and tried thanking him for his service. Gotta be nice, you wouldn't like him when he sat staring down a barrel. Why are you so nervous? If I got mugged, I'd just call a cab, call a cab, call a cab. If I got mugged, I'd just call a cab. Shit like this brings the movement down. Everyone's a feminist until there is a spider around.